That's a lot of nuts. It is a good day to be a hater, ladies and gentlemen. I woke up this morning with a feeling in my soul that I would have something to hate on. And from my understanding, I'm right. Mr. Beast uploaded another video. Mr. Beast, the worst YouTuber. The dude who's got all this money but has never done anything beneficial for society ever. Oh, I am so excited to clown on this dude. What did he do this time? Did he give away houses to people who needed houses? Did he donate a bunch of money to an orphanage? Did he take a bunch of cars and give them out to people who don't have cars? What could I possibly have to fuel my rage today? So Mr. Beast uploaded a video. That's kind of what he does. The dude seems to enjoy it tremendously. In this video, he did one of the most incredible things since recreating every one of the death games from Squid Games. He gave the gift of sight to a thousand people. He paid for an already existing surgery that could remedy visual issues that these individuals were having and effectively took them from being blind and unable to see to being able to see again. Such an incredible, generous gift that he bestowed upon these individuals. So naturally, when he uploaded his video garnering 66 million views over the course of three days, showcasing this tremendous feat, he was met with negativity. I understand this sounds weird coming from me, YouTube's number one certified Mr. Beast hater. I did in one video, of course, say that I think he's kind of a loser because of how socially awkward he acts on all the podcasts that he did. But don't get it misconstrued. I do not align with the people that are giving this man hate for this purpose. I have never said that he makes bad videos, doesn't do a good thing with his money, or anything along those sides. I just think he's kind of a dork to talk to in a long-form format on a podcast. I don't think I'd want to go have a beer with the kid. That's all. But when it comes to doing the things that he does, the incredible gifts that he bestowed upon these people that otherwise wouldn't be able to be the functioning members of society and thrive to be the creative individuals that they want to, giving them the gift of sight, literally not being able to see and now being able to see because this YouTuber had an excuse to make a video out of it, that's an incredible thing. I, I don't think anybody's on the other side of this outside of Twitter. So why is Mr. Beast getting hate for this video? Clearly, it was an incredibly generous gesture. He changed thousands of people's lives for the better out of his own pocket. Not only that, but he managed to shed a spotlight on some of the issues with American healthcare, pointing out the fact that now that these thousands of people can see again, they can go to work, drive a car, make art, produce something of value. I mean, ignoring the fact that medicine and healthcare maybe doesn't make the profits they would from milking every dollar out of them. Everybody benefits from these people being able to be more productive. If there's an ailment that we have a cure for, why aren't we curing the ailment? Is that not for the better of mankind? Hard to disagree with. So what are people bitching about? The major thing that most people are getting upset about when it comes to Mr. Beast videos is just that they're sick of hearing about Mr. Beast. And I kind of understand where they're coming from. The dude is so popular, so famous at this moment, that even if you don't care about his videos or it's not your cup of tea or you've just watched enough that you don't want any more Mr. Beast content, the dude makes such huge waves in the internet every time he uploads a video. The stunts and the stakes are so high. The money that he spends is so unfathomable that you're going to hear about whatever Mr. Beast is up to, whether you want to or not, just because of how many people are talking about it, reporting on it, even the videos themselves getting tens of millions of views. I mean, it's going to show up in front of your eyes, whether you were looking for it or not. But I'm sure some people are sick of it. I'm sure some people are sick of having to suck his toes, pat him on the back. Yeah, Mr. Beast, great. Yeah, well, oh, he cured cancer. Okay. Oh, he got to the moon. He created a second earth. He brought back spicy nuggets from Wendy's. Great. Cool. Like, we get it, you know? Listen, that much is completely understandable. I think we would all agree. If you don't hate Mr. Beast, but you don't like Mr. Beast, that's completely fine. You're not obligated to watch, enjoy, retweet, or spend your day talking about another dude doing things if you don't want to. That's completely fair. The issue comes in people who are actively trying to tear down Mr. Beast because the points just don't stick. People are very adamant that the sort of content that he makes and they can't really put their finger on why, is malicious or detrimental to the people that he's giving money to. People have been throwing around the phrase poverty tourism, the idea that you're using your money to showcase and make a spectacle out of those less fortunate than you. 
Think of people who visit other countries just to show off how poor Africa is. Yeah, the message of what you're doing might be, we need to help these people. We need to donate money to fix this issue. But at a certain point when you're doing super zoom-ins and you're doing hyper-focused content on just the worst parts of humanity, it becomes less of a moral good a good message, a portrayal of what we should be doing in an effort to rally people together to solve a problem, and it becomes poverty tourism. It becomes you making a spectacle out of the less fortunate for the sake of internet views, and that's bad. But it's really difficult to try and say that's what Mr. Beast is doing. It's not like he's going to Africa and giving away water. You know what I mean? That would be in poor taste. Giving away houses for a dollar, giving away money for the sake of garnering a lot of money, solving medical issues for people, just donating cash to basically change their life. That's not poverty tourism. That's just kind of being a good dude. This notion that you can't really put your finger on it has been something that's been spread around with this rhetoric. People are like, listen, I don't like Mr. Beast, but I can't really say why. That's, that's a number one Mr. Beast hater. I gotta give you credit. You can hate a dude without even knowing why you hate a dude. That is an intense level of insecurity that can only exist in the depths of Twitter. But listen, this is nothing new. The more popular that you get, the more haters that you're gonna have simply because they wanna be contrarian. Am I gonna get mad at somebody because they decided not to watch Game of Thrones because it was too popular? No. I mean, sure, it's a great show for the first four seasons or so, but if you decide you don't want to watch it just because nobody else will shut up about Game of Thrones and telling you to watch Game of Thrones, I get that. There's probably a deep-seated stubbornness in you that you're like, I'm not going to give in to these people telling me what to do simply because they think I should do it. I want to make my own choices. Power to you. But the extension of that notion when it comes to Mr. Beast is the idea that he has some sort of evil ulterior motive. That the only reason he's giving away all this money is because he made a deal with the devil to become the richest YouTuber ever, but he couldn't keep a dollar of it. Or that he's planning on planting microchips in people's head after he gives them money. Or he's trying to screw them over by making them pay more taxes. None of which is true. The idea that people are hating on Mr. Beast simply because he's gotten too popular is understandable. The idea that people don't like Mr. Beast because he's the Antichrist, that feels like a stretch. There's a combination of things that have come together uh, that have led people to believe that Mr. Beast is the devil. The word beast in his name has sort of just been, that's sort of been the thing that people are like, oh, he's a beast and the Antichrist was a beast, so connect the dots and there he is. People have pointed out that there have been ancient scriptures that the first Antichrist would rise from water. And then people have pointed out that Mr. Beast cleaned a bunch of pollution out of the ocean. And so look at that, connected the dots. He's, he's definitely the Antichrist. There have been other rhetoric from old religious texts saying something along the lines of the first Antichrist will be capable of performing miracles. And people are connecting the dots to say that him giving people sight is what says that he's the Antichrist. Like, do you see, do you see why this gets, do you see why I now feel the need to distance myself? Like I thought I was a Mr. Beast hater. I'm not a Mr. Beast hater. Compared to these idiots, I love Mr. Beast. Give me them toes. If a homeless man asked Mr. Beast for money and the cameras weren't on, Mr. Beast would beat the homeless man to death with a bike lock for his own amusement. This is, listen, I hope you guys understand that I'm trying to shed light on both sides of this argument so that you can appreciate the ridiculousness of some of the things being said versus the reality that is the good that Mr. Beast is doing, okay? But life is not black and white, you know? As ridiculous as this tweet that I'm humoring here when I show it on screen, as ridiculous as this tweet is, there is a tidbit of truth to it. There is a singular source of distaste that actually can be echoed through what Mr. Beast is doing. There was a large trend of people giving money to homeless people on YouTube. I'm sure you've seen it. It probably still exists, where people will make a video of them walking up to a homeless person and giving them $1,000. Changing a homeless person's life, the title would say. Giving away $10,000, the thumbnail would put in bold impact font. Is it good to give money to homeless people to help those less fortunate? I think we can all agree. When you stick a camera in a homeless person's face, 
just to milk every ounce of happiness that they portray because you gave them this money for the sole purpose of getting clicks on the internet, does that take something away from it? If you're going to give away money, but only in a way that subsequently also makes you money and is a tax write-off and garners you clout, if you're making more than $1,000 than the $1,000 that you're giving away to somebody, did you really give away any money? There is definitely some of that in Mr. Beast's content. I, you know, we'd all be lying if we said that some of the things he's doing, he wouldn't be doing if he wasn't going to make money and attention and build his business from that. That's true. However, the business that he's built is designed to continue this cycle. If you're giving $1,000 to a homeless person, making $10,000 from the YouTube video, and then continuing to do that over and over again, so long as the end goal isn't just to have a fleet of cars and a bunch of mansions and then never give away money again, it's probably still okay. I think it's important to point this out because you have to understand how the business model works that Mr. Beast has set up. This machine that he's created to be able to continue to pump out these generous acts has to be able to reclaim some of that money to keep doing it. So these videos are designed in a way to get as many views as possible to help grow his business. This is an expensive surgery and doing it a thousand times over, it probably doesn't matter if this video did a hundred million views, which it probably will. He's probably not going to recoup the money that he spent on this video in particular. So understanding that he has to make sure he gets as many views as possible. You can sort of fault Mr. Beast for the one thing about this video that I think everybody can kind of agree wasn't great, and that's this thumbnail. As much as you don't want to paint everything Mr. Beast has done as poverty tourism, as much as you don't want to compare the things that he does to sticking a camera in a homeless person's face as you give them a bunch of money for clicks on the internet, this thumbnail does kind of feel like it embodies that notion, right? I remember a while ago, there was this beauty and lifestyle influencer, Jordan Cheyenne, I think is how you say her name. And she caught a tremendous amount of flack because she forgot to edit out a part of her daily vlog where she was getting her son to pose for the camera while crying. Their dog was sick. And I believe that he was crying, thinking about the idea that they might not have their dog for much longer. And this YouTuber, Jordan, took this opportunity to say, look at the camera, pose for the camera, cry for the camera. And her son is saying, but mom, I am crying. I'm actually sad. And she was going, yeah, but do it for the camera. Make sure the camera can see that we're both sad. This is going to make for a good thumbnail. People were very upset about that, even though it wasn't fake. They were legitimately sad. And if you wanted to make a video that got a lot of clicks, it's not completely wrong to, you know, pose a little bit to showcase the real emotion that you're feeling. But it felt icky. It felt performative, right? And that idea that, I mean, it probably had to do with the fact that it was a kid that you had in the thumbnail. But there's a kid in this thumbnail. How much can you fault Mr. Beast for this? Because it does kind of feel like it's in poor taste. People have been comparing it to the scene and come and see. And I got it, you know, it's uncanny. It's pretty close, but you know, I, you'd probably be lying if you said that through the team of Mr. Beast editors and the refined thumbnails that they're doing, they didn't see this movie poster and this shot and decide that this is what was gonna get the most clicks. It feels icky. It feels a little over the top and performative, but if the end goal is that more people click the video so that he can do more videos like this, it's a gray area. You see what I mean? You're not completely wrong in the hate for Mr. Beast. Is it all for the greater good? Do the ends justify the means? There's a lot going on here. I don't think it's surprising that Mr. Beast is getting hate, right? I think it's not necessarily justified. You can't really call him evil, I don't think. But I think there is a big disconnect between the small YouTuber doing a tremendous amount of views for counting to 100,000 or garnering subscribers for PewDiePie to the multi-billion dollar corporation that Mr. Beast has become, the reality TV show of the YouTube videos that he's uploading, it's natural that there are going to be haters. People are going to want to be contrarian. People are going to want to be people that just don't watch anything popular and would prefer to spend their time watching smaller YouTubers or not supporting the biggest dog in the race. That's all reasonable. I think because he's so big and it's just natural to assume that it's acceptable that some people are going to hate on him, there have been people that have found their own cult in the hatred of Mr. Beast. There are haters that are fueling other haters. There are people who are getting more views and attention on the internet from the haters of Mr. Beast than anything that they've ever done. Mr. Beast is so big that you could be 100,000 views deep in a hate video 
And there will be that many people who dislike Mr. Beast because he's so big that people can make an entire career on just spreading hate. Overall conclusion, probably a good thing. The more hate that you give to Mr. Beast, the more people that are talking about Mr. Beast, it's all going to end up fueling more money, more attention, more clout in his pockets. And assuming that he doesn't suddenly do a video where he blinds a thousand people and goes full evil Mr. Beast, I think it's probably all going to end up for the good. You don't need to have Mr. Beast money to join my Patreon. You don't even need to be able to see to join my Patreon. I don't know how you'd click the right buttons or put in your credit card information, but either way, it helps to fund these videos every week, and I would appreciate it tremendously. Remember to click the like button if you made it this far in the video. Remember to click confirm after you unsubscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Mr. Spies!